All rise. gives this beautiful bride away? We're going to get to that, but I have a few comments before yes, we do, sir. okay? Go ahead. You know, I used to, uh, no, I always have enjoyed marriages, and then they started involving my daughters, and it came a lot harder, but yes, uh, anyway, you know, uh, the day has arrived, and uh, there's been a lot of planning in the last three months. There have been a lot of things going on in the last year and a half. But to understand that God's planning has been for 20 plus years to bring us to this place today. And I just want to make a couple comments. Jer, I have so appreciated getting to know your heart. And you have, uh, and I shared this last night, but you came up for Easter two years ago. And uh, we sat down and ate a meal. And, and when I walked away from that, I was impressed with your sober-mindedness, your seriousness, and um, your commitment to Christ. And in fact, when my wife and I went to go to bed that night, I asked her, how old is that guy? Because hmm. I have a lot of daughters. <laughs> I want you to know that... Uh, Hannah is a hard worker, she's diligent, she's committed to family, and she will sacrifice for family. She's been doing that for 20 plus years, and today that just changes to where you get that blessing. Cool. And uh, I believe God has called each one of you to each other today, and so what a joy it is to celebrate that. And so... It is her mother and I, and I would say our whole family, <laughs> that surrender her Good. and give her to be your wife. Good. Jerry, would you take your wife's arm? our bride and groom make their way up here, would you join us in song this afternoon as we sing praise to the Lord? song. You may be seated. On the behalf of our bride and our groom, thank you today for being here and honoring them with your presence as they're joined today in holy matrimony. We know this is a Christian marriage. It's different. Because of your commitment to Christ, you're going to have a commitment to each other. Because of your desire to please the Lord, you're going to have a desire to please Him, and you'll desire to please each other. You know what I mean. I'm excited that this day has finally come, and here we are, uh, just in those moments of 
premarital counseling and times with your family, but yet this moment's arrived where today you're going to be husband and wife. But before we give you that, I want to just give you a couple of quick challenges. I won't be long. And some reminders. We talked about this back in Genesis 2.24, the leave, the cleave, and I added in the weave. The Bible said, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. We talked about that even before there was a mother-in-law and a father-in-law, this, God put this verse in the Bible. He knew the importance. Now, as a, your families are transitioning, you're leaving the parts of who you were, though the relationships are still there, but a new relationship, a new home is being started. And you're leaving two families and you're cleaving to one another and starting a new one. And the weaving of your lives together is gonna to be an amazing thing. Where at times now you see things where you're alike and parts where you're different, really you'll become one. You'll start a thought and the other one will finish it, a sentence, and you'll anticipate, you'll know each other. You'll know the little moods and the feelings. And soon your lives, you'll begin to think alike. Even people will joke that eventually you begin to look alike. There's something true about leaving and cleaving and weaving together. I would remind you also to walk in the Spirit. You know, the Bible says there in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, there's so many reminders. We put on the new man in verse 24. We're not to go to bed angry in verse 26. We're to not let the enemy have place in verse 27. It talks about our labor in verse 28 and our words in verse 30. Kindness in verse 32. But right there in the middle of all of it, it talks about not grieving the Holy Spirit. And any day and every day that you walk in the Spirit, your home's going to be something special. If I look back at any times where maybe I was unkind or hurt my wife, there were days I did not walk in the Spirit. If you'll make it your goal every day to walk with the Lord, your goal every day to walk in the Spirit, then by default, the fruit of that Spirit will spill over into each other's life. Walk in the Spirit. Be lifelong learners. One of the things I enjoyed as we first met that first time is you were already letting me know conversations you were having with other married couples. Some had been married 5, 10 years, 20 years, 30 and you were asking advice. I commend you for that, but don't stop. Matter of fact, there are two stages of life. There are the stage where I don't know what I don't know, and then the stage of I know what I don't know. You're at the stage where you don't know what you don't know, but as you are married, you begin to grow, you realize, I need some more wisdom. Continue to pursue it. Keep reading. Keep having dinners with other couples and ask them, talk to us about this. How did God get you here? What are some advice that you would give us at year one, year five, year 10? You know, I just got back from Israel and I was there. I met a couple. And my wife and I have been married 25 years and they were on their 50th anniversary. I fell in love with them. I sat with them at meals. And as I sit across the table, I said, talk to me because I want to be like you when I get to 50. And I called my wife on the phone. I said, I met the best couple. They've been married 50 years and I want to be like them when I grow up. Let that journey be there on your life that you're a lifelong growers and learners. And then always make have a home a little bit of heaven on earth. This world is dark. The storms are going to blow and you're going to feel them. But as when you come home, it's a little something special. It's an oasis, sometimes in a dark day. I was at Engedi just a few weeks ago. And Engedi was that little oasis place. David's discouraged. He's running from Saul. And Jonathan had encouraged him on the way. And I thought that was neat. He was encouraged on the way to Engedi. And right there in the middle of the desert, the Dead Seas in the distance, is an oasis. And there David was refreshed. His soul was renewed in order to continue the journey. And when you come home, there's no better place to be renewed. There's no better place to escape the world than in the confine of your walls. It doesn't matter how big the walls are, where you're living at. It's home is where your family's at, where your wife's at, where your husband's at. When you sit down and you close a door and you close out the world, and there's just something a little special. Continue to make home heaven on earth. I know that God has great things in store for you. At this time, our bride and groom have written their own vows, and we're going to give those to you, and I'm excited about their love and their commitment to God and to each other. Jeremiah, would you please repeat after me? In the presence of God, family, and friends. In the presence of God, family, and friends. I, Jeremiah Robert. I, Jeremiah Robert, take you, Hannah Marlis, take you, Hannah Marlis, to be my wife, to be my wife, by God's grace, by God's grace, I promise to cherish, I promise to cherish, protect and provide, protect and provide, for you from this day forward, for you from this day forward, 
I will earnestly seek God. I will earnestly seek God. And will lead and treasure. And will lead and treasure. And guide you. And guide you. Pursuing to glorify Him. Pursuing to glorify Him. With our lives. With our lives. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. Or richer or poor. Richer or poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In joys and in sorrows. In joys and in sorrows. Hannah, I love you with all my heart. Hannah, I love you with all of my heart. Gladly forsaking all others. Gladly forsaking all others. I vow to be faithful to you. I vow to be faithful to you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Hannah, would you please take the microphone? And would you please repeat after me? In the presence of God, our family and friends. In the presence of God, our family and friends. I, Hannah Marlis, take you. I, Hannah Marlis, take you. Jeremiah Robert. Jeremiah Robert. To be my husband. To be my husband. By God's grace. By God's grace. I promise to cherish, support. I promise to cherish, support. And respect you. And respect you. From this day forward. From this day forward. I will earnestly seek God. I will earnestly seek God. And will follow. And will follow. Honor and submit to you. Honor and submit to you. As unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, or poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In joys and in sorrows. In joys and in sorrows. Jeremiah, I love you with all my heart. Jeremiah, I love you with all of my heart. Gladly forsaking all others. Gladly forsaking all others. I vow to be faithful to you. I vow to be faithful to you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Awesome. Thank you. Take that back. This time we're going to have the exchanging of the rings. We understand rings, uh, no beginning, no end, and the symbols of the gift that's there. But to me, the ring is more than just the gift. When you look at somebody and you look at that left hand and that third finger, and you see that ring, you know it means something. It means that their heart belongs to somebody. Even though their spouse may not be present, they're identified as belonging, if you will, uh, to someone else. Uh, their heart is with someone else. And so as we exchange these rings today, every time you look down at that, that ring on your finger, it's a reminder that there's somebody that I love, there's somebody that I'm committed with. Could we take a, a, a Hannah's ring at this time? And Jared, would you place Hannah's ring on her third finger of her left hand and repeat after me, as a sign and a token, as a sign and token of this covenant, of this covenant, I give you this ring. I give you this ring. Can we please have Jeremiah's ring. Thank you. I'll take the get that microphone back. Hold that there for you. Okay. Let's try this. That's a little bit better there. You hold that for her. And would you please repeat after me? Let me get back to my spot here. As a sign and a token. As a sign and a token of this covenant, of this covenant, I give you this ring. I give you this ring. Would you please join with me in prayer as I pray for Jer and Hannah? God, we thank you for this couple, Lord, for their life and their commitment to each other. Lord, their desire to put you first in their life. Lord, their desire to honor you. Lord, we have heard from the many friends and testimonies last night and even today about what uh, caught their interest. But Father, first of all, it was their love for you and it was their love for others. Continue to bless not just this beginning, but all the days that remain. And we'll thank you for it. It's in Christ's name we pray, amen.
By the power vested to me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Jeremiah, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have the privilege to introduce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Jeremiah Duggar. Mm -hmm. 